So, hello everyone. I haven't done this in a while. Um, this video is going to be on argument writing. So we're going to get to the heart of your research paper, which is to produce a uh, cohesive paper uh, that's written objectively, but is sound in research and arguments. So let's take a look at this. All right, so obviously argument writing is different than arguing with your parent because you're going to use sound research. You're going to use your citations to back up your statements. So you want to make sure in your paper that you're convincing the readers that your claims are true. So your first viewpoint, second viewpoint, third viewpoint that you should have at this point you should be using evidence, which is your facts and data from various sources. Keep in mind, you need to always use six sources, uh, no older than the last 10 years. And then we're going to get into the counterclaim. Um, this is the refuting the opposing viewpoint section, which is also known as the counterclaim, which is looking at the other side of the argument and kind of invalidating or looking at why the opposing viewpoints are wrong. So in order to, uh, for it to be effective, you have to make sure you have a clear position in your paper. And we, we're, uh, we have already started looking at the two sides. You have your viewpoint and then the opposing viewpoint. Um, and you want to make sure you support it with facts and citations. We can ignore this part because we're not doing an essay. We're doing a research paper. So you want to make sure that you have those APA style citations. And I'll talk a little bit about those even though we've already discussed it, but just as a review. Now, um, these are types of claims. You can have a cause and effect, person thing, or event cause something else to happen. So, Ricky Tiki Tavi's victory over the snakes was a result of his natural abilities as a mongoose rather than his desire to protect the people in the cottage. So, basically, this statement is a claim that is giving you a cause and effect type claim. All right, and you can use these different types of claims in your paper. All right. So here's another one claims of definition or fact. You can argue what a definition is or if something is really a fact. So in the story, The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry, two characters provide an outstanding illustration of what foolish is. So again, this is a claim of definition or fact. And it's questioning, bringing into question whether or not it's a fact. All right, this is another type of claim. It's called a claim about values. Argue the worth of something. And if it is valued, while Peralt's Cinderella is an interesting story, it is a second-rate story when compared to Grimm's Cinderella version. So if you see here, it is questioning the value of Cinderella. So you can question the value of an opposing viewpoint in your paper, whether that viewpoint is valid compared to something else. And we'll look at an example of that too. All right, this is called claims about solutions or policies. Argue for or against certain approaches to problems. So for example, the Capults have their daughter's well-being in mind when they follow tradition and make arrangements for her to marry Paris. So this is, um, a claim about a solution. All right, so it's arguing that, and if you look at the statement here, it says the Capults have their daughter's well being in mind when they follow tradition and make arrangements for her to marry Paris. So the claim here is that they have the best interests for their daughter when they made the decision. So basically, it is arguing for that position. And the reason why is trying to validate the reason why that decision was made because it had the, her well-being in mind. So you can take an argument and create a solution-based claim to argue why that is the best solution to the problem. So your viewpoints are, in a sense, can be solution-based claims. Why these viewpoints support your original thesis statement, such as smoking should be banned or homework 
should not be mandatory. Those claims can be solution based. Those viewpoints, I'm sorry, that support the thesis statement can be solution based. All right, so now we're going to look at how to address the counterclaim. So this is going to the refuting the opposing viewpoint section. So you have to refute or prove wrong the other point. Now, in this, to create a balanced paper, you still want to recognize the other side's points. So that's why we want to look at the viewpoints and the opposing viewpoints. So it's not a one-sided paper. And it also you lends credence to the writer's claims. So in some cases, it's always good to recognize the potential um, positive of a claim, but then to come back and say, well, while this may be a good idea, it still has its flaws. You see what I mean? So you're pointing out that some of the viewpoints can have some validity to them. However, there's another side that can also um, be a little bit more effective. So you could do that in your paper too. You, it's okay to recognize that the viewpoints do have some positive points to make, but the opposing viewpoints, um, or that you can use that to do the counterclaim. All right, so you want to, um, components of, of effective writing, you want to make sure it's clear and false, forceful, it's well constructed. You want to make sure you have strong textual, textual support with clear, lucid, which is clear, exp explanations of the text support. So using those citations to support your claims. You want to make sure you address the counterclaims which is the refuting the opposing viewpoint section and you want to make sure you have a strong conclusion. All right, so let's look at an example real quick in the research paper for folder. So I'm going to go to the example. So here is his opposing viewpoint. This one is on limiting gun control. So his opposing viewpoints are, uh, let's see, first guns aren't only used in violence but it's in, in self-defense. Secondly, guns put reassurance to some people. And third, restrictions on guns couldn't stop people and only guns cause suicide. So these are the opposing viewpoints. Now, the reason why I'm giving you the opposing viewpoints is because part of what I want you to turn in is how would you counter these claims? How would you refute these viewpoints? All right. So, I'm going to give you again his thesis statement. Let's go back up so you know what this is about. So, this is this thesis statement is about um, limiting gun laws in America. All right, and he has three three viewpoints here, and we'll scroll down. Um, that first, people have the right to bear arms. Um, people in the U.S have been caring for their own families and friends and their own lives because of gun violence rates in America. Thirdly, gun suicide rates are high and suicides by guns over 50. Oh, I'm sorry. So he is, he wants to support um, gun limits. So the opposing viewpoint that you're going to argue against is here. So I want you to think of how you, how would you argue against um, guns aren't only used in violence, but in self-defense? How would you write a counterclaim for that? How would you write a counterclaim for um, people feel reassured when they have guns? And then thirdly, uh, restrictions on guns couldn't stop people and not only guns cause suicide. So part of your assignment for turning this in is to write a paragraph on each one of these points, a counterclaim. How would you argue in your refuting your opposing viewpoint section against these three statements and that's exactly what you're going to turn in so argue against guns aren't only used in violence but in self-defense how would you argue against that what would you say to someone who says that guns aren't only used in violence but we need them for self-defense we need it to defend ourselves it is our right how do you argue against that how do you argue that having a gun reassures people it makes them feel protected. It makes them have a sense of security. It makes them feel safe. And then lastly, how would you argue against um, 
guns aren't the only thing that causes suicide. There are other things that cause suicide. So limiting guns won't necessarily solve the problem. People will find ways to kill themselves in other ways. So how would you argue against guns aren't the only thing that causes suicide and people can kill in other ways? So that is this presentation. Um, that is your assignment is to write three paragraphs arguing against those viewpoints. And um, until next time, take care and continue working on your paper.